Hey everybody, welcome to Home Recording Made Easy and Plugin Review Friday, where every Friday I show you a new plugin, we walk through its feature set, and I show you how to apply it to a mix so you can make professional sounding mixes in your home studio. Okay, before we get started, if you like what you see in this video, please consider subscribing and make sure you hit that notification bell. And also make sure you stick around to the end of the video because I have a few free gifts I want to give you that is absolutely going to help you make better music in your home studio. So stick around. Okay, everybody, welcome. So in this uh, plugin review uh, Friday here, we're gonna take a look again at part two here of our new um, little short video series for the next few weeks. This is the Universal Audio Lunar Recording System, kind of an overview. Um, last week uh, was part one, which I'll link in the description box below, where I just kind of give you an, an introduction, show you this screen here, this page, the start screen, and show you what was here. And we took a look at the store and some of the other things. Again, check out the video below. Um, in this video, I just want to take you through the uh, mixer view and the edit screen view after I've imported some audio and created a session, and just kind of give you a walk around to kind of show you the basics of how everything is laid out. So last week we ended up on this screen right here um, where we talked about creating a new session. Now I've already done that and I created a new session here called LMS Volume 8. Um, and this is under the recent uh, files here. So um, again, if you want to know how to create a session, just go back to last week's video. But we're just going to double click and open this. And here is our song file. And so when you create a new song like this, you're going to empty with a, what you're going to come to this screen here. Um, and you can import audio, which I did. I imported uh, wave files here. And the way I did that was I came up to a file and I came over to import and I, I um, navigated to my, uh, to my folder my stem file and I just highlighted them all and clicked open and it dumps them in here. And then I color coded things and we'll, we'll take a look at that now. So here is the edit screen, your typical timeline view from left to right as you would see in other, any DAW. Let's just kind of walk through and show you how it's kind of laid out. So over here on the left hand side, if I click on the first track here, oh, I'll go all the way up to the top here. You'll see our input for the track that is selected. So we're on this uh, kick drum track here. Um, as the first track and here is uh, where you can add um, inputs if you click the plus button um, This will allow you to um, if you were recording, let's say let's say this was an empty track without a file on it This is going to be um, for your inputs for your uh, specific Apollo interface right here So we're not going to do that, but that's how you do that You would choose what input you wanted to use uh, for the input of that track. So that's the input section uh, underneath that we have our tape section where you can add the tape plugin that we talked about in the last video We can click that here and here are the two tape machines that are available for me The one that comes free with the uh, Luna recording system is the oxide tape That comes free when you download this which is a free DAW for the Mac um, I also have the Studer 800 which you can also purchase if you don't have it but if you already own Universal Audio prior to Luna and you own the Studer 800 tape machine as I do, it'll show up here. And you can see that there's uh, two empty slots, C and D. My guess is as uh, Luna kind of rolls out, there'll be more tape machine plugins that'll be available. So that's pretty cool here. Okay, so we could close that here. Um, underneath that is the inserts where you can insert plugins. And the uh, one question a lot of people have asked me prior to Luna coming out was, will you be able to use third-party plugins or is it just universal audio plugins? And then the answer to that question is yes, you can use third-party plugins too. Anything that's on your uh, DAW. And as I scroll down, it starts with all the universal audio plugins, but uh, here's all my Audified plugins. Here's my... Uh, Slate Digital stuff, my Fab Filter plugins, my T Rex, um, IK Multimedia, the Overload plugins, all of them. So you can use any plugin that you have on your system here. So this is just like a little browser um, um, orientated or organized by manufacturer. Let me try to close all these. They come with them all open, but just so you can see. Um, and at the very top of the list is where all the Universal Audio plugins are here. Now, what I don't know is I don't own every Universal Audio plugin. 
So if you click on one that you don't own, it's going to ask you if you want to go out to the store and buy it. I have to figure out if there is a way to maybe remove the ones that I don't own or hide them or create a favorites folder for the Universal Audio plugin so I don't have to sift through a bunch of plugins that I don't own, if that makes any sense. But here is our browser, okay? So yes, so we can you can add third-party plugins in, which is great. Um, underneath that, we have our sends. Again, if we have, um, right now we don't have anything set up, but we have like a send for a delay or a reverb, we can come over here to send our kick track in this case to that send. We also have an area here for cues, for uh, headphone, um, headphone uh, cues for recording. And then we have our output. Right now this is routed to a drum bus along with the other drums and I'll speak about that in a second. And then down here we have our fader down here. Now, um, you may be asking, well, where's the console so I can see all the faders? We'll get to that in a second. So that's the left-hand side, depending on for the track that you have selected. Next to that immediate left here, we have um, our loop track, um, a timeline, a tempo track, a time signature track markers, all related to the timeline here. And you can just uh, click on them and you can open them. Here's a tempo track if you want to add a tempo track. You can add a time signature track if you want to do that. And that is all going to reside here on the timeline. Here's our markers track. You can even color code the markers for different sections of the song, which is pretty cool. Um, you can turn the snap to grid on and off here. Okay, so that's over here. Uh, over the top of that, we have our timeline here. Okay, and we can, uh, we can change the timeline and the way it looks from uh, Bart's, from Bart's, from Beat's and bars back to uh, to samples or whatever we want to do. We can use a loop here, cycle, and we can loop a section of the song if we want to. All the basic stuff that you would see in pretty much any DAW here. Um, let's see, uh, underneath the markers here, we have this thing called tracks where we can, oh, change the height of the tracks. I didn't see this before. So let's see if you want to make these small. If I want to make a micro so we got more real estate on the screen, I was looking for that before. Really, really tiny. And you can make them extra large and make them huge if you want to. Uh, mini and maybe even micro will give us a better overall view. Okay, and you can also resize the tracks just by clicking and uh, dragging on the left hand side again. Pretty standard with any DAW. Okay, that's the tracks here. We have this thing called versions. Well, that's just going to scale this up and down here. I'm not really sure what that does. That must be for different takes, I would imagine, and stuff for maybe layering and those kinds of things. i got to research that a bit more. Um, along the top here, or actually, let's take a look at each one of the tracks. So if you, if you scale down the track, you'll see you have your record, you have your input, your solo, your mute buttons, um, all the usual suspects. You could turn the volume up and down here, which will also correspond with the fader down here on the bottom uh, left-hand corner of your screen. Um, let's see, you have your inputs, your outputs, basically all the same stuff. Warping, any automation stuff, those kinds of things. Along the top here, it's pretty, uh, pretty laid out pretty uh, cleanly here. Um, the first section I want to show you is the, um, is the view section. So right now we're on the, in the edit screen. If we click this, now we're in the console view. So this is where you could take a look at everything like a traditional mixer. I don't know if you can separate this window and maybe drag it onto a separate display. My guess is that you can, uh, but I haven't figured that out yet. Again, I'm brand new to this. this. I've been using this for literally 30 minutes, so I don't know yet. But I would guess you probably could, but you can just switch back and forth by the click of that button. Or you can use on a Mac command in the plus key, and that will switch back and forth automatically. Okay, you can also come up to view and you can toggle it this way, uh, right here, toggle the timeline in the mixer. Okay, so you can do that as well. Oops, oh, did that, did that separate it as a, as a note? I thought that might've separated it. No, it didn't, okay. So those are our three views here. Now also next to that, we have this little show hide window. This is gonna show us all our tracks here on our left hand side, like our, you know, our track view. Um, if we were to come over here, we can take a look at the focus. That's good. Focus is going to show you the channel strip where the inserts and the tape machine and everything are, as I mentioned before. Next to that is going to be the info, which is along the bottom of Luna. It's in the way of my dock here. Let me 
bring it up here, where you could see your sample size, the clock, you could see the stuff that pertains to the uh, Universal Audio DSP, which is cool. Um, and then you can also look at your monitoring section, which is over here on the right hand side, which is, you can see my voice coming in on channel four because I have a Universal Audio Apollo. So you can decide to keep, hide, open or close depending on, oops, on how much real estate uh, you need on your screen here. You can take everything away if you wanted to and you can see that's gonna be the maximum amount of room you have on the screen. But I wanna see the output monitor. I like to see everything, at least when I'm first starting off with a DAW, I like to see everything so I know everything's laid out. Maybe not so much the tracks, but you could even resize this just by dragging it in like that. So the track window doesn't need to be as big, okay? Next to that, we have our BPMs, our um, tempo. We have our click on and off here. And you can turn the click up or down here. There we go. We have our counter here, our transport controls, all the usual suspects, our loop button. Here we have the start, the end, and the length. If you wanna pick, I think this would be a section if you're gonna loop. Yeah, you, as I move the loop, you can see the where it starts, where it ends, and the length of the loop. Uh, so you can kind of cycle things if you wanted to. Makes it really simple. Okay, next to that we have some global settings. Now the one thing I will say about the Luna thus far, and again, I don't know if, you can, uh, if we could change this, everything up here looks very small, hard to read. I don't see where you can maybe expand things to look a little bit larger or make them bigger. Uh, full screen, we'll just bring this, let's see, full screen doesn't really do too much as far as that goes. Um, we can exit full screen. Um, so again, these are kind of tiny. I don't know if there's a way to make those things larger. But anyway, um, here is our um, workflow here where we can turn Oh, this, this, will, this will change what happens at the top here. So this will give us our Q inputs and Q outputs. Here is our um, punch in stuff. And for our cues here, our workflow, this will bring us up uh, things for doing MIDI, MIDI keyboard, things for playing MIDI instruments. This little symbol will uh, is an editing, kind of like a toolbar, like the macro toolbar kind of in Studio One. And then this is gonna give us, uh, Oh, this will give us the ability to click around the uh, the edit screen here. So you can kind of, and then you can mix down. So if you want to mix out your song, you click that. And here's your mix down button for when you want to export your song. You're going to mix down window. So again, nothing uh, really earth shattering. Pretty standard. It's just every, every DAW does things a little bit differently. And then like I said, on the right hand side, you have your, um, your output meter. Now again, to go to the mixer view, now what I've done is I've color coded all these tracks and the way you do that, I just imported them. They all came in as a default color. Uh, so let's, um, let's first make the tracks a little bit larger so we can see them. We'll even make them a little larger than that. The medium is the default. So the way you color code, let's say over here I'm on my kick track you, you uh, left click here on this little sidebar and you'll get a color window and you can pick the color and you can change that and it also will change the uh, the region, which is pretty cool. Uh, once you're done, you can click that and the color palette goes away. If you wanna color code multiple tracks at the same time, you, hold, you highlight the first one, hold down your shift key. And if we wanted all of our drums to be the same color, we would highlight them all. You'll see, you can see they're selected. And now if I wanna change all of them, they all change colors. Again, pretty standard stuff, nothing earth shattering there. On each one of these tracks, if you want to adjust the clip gain, one thing I do like here is you have a little fader, a little fader here as you move your cursor, and this will allow you to increase or decrease the gain depending on how hot or how cold your signal is coming in. I don't see a way yet to zoom in on the audio so you don't have to raise the gain, but actually just see it bigger. Like down here on these floor toms and stuff, I can't even see where he might have hit the tom. There must be a way to zoom in. I haven't figured that out yet. Um, I, again, just poking around here. Not really sure. Okay, so that's it on this part of the screen, on the edit screen. Oh, and down here we have um, this little plus and minus button. Again, they're really small. Will allow us to zoom way in on the timeline or way out on the timeline. But I don't see a way, as I just mentioned, for us to blow up and zoom in on the audio on the waveform. 
but I'm sure there's a way to do that. I got to think there is. Uh, you could click on here. You could do fade ins and fade outs, all that stuff. You could change the clip gain, as I said. Um, I haven't gone through all the tools yet. It looks like we have kind of a smart tool, depending on where you put the cursor on the region, it changes. I don't see anything that, you know, shortcuts for different types of tools. Again, we'll have to look at that as we move forward with our future videos. If I go over to the command plus again and go over to the mixer window again, here's the mixer, which is what you're, you know, pretty familiar with. Um, again, at the top, if we just start on one channel here, the one thing I don't like yet is I don't like the fact that you can't color code the entire channel strip so you can see what's being selected. So as I click up here, I'm not selecting any of the tracks here. I actually have to come down to the name of the track. Again, I'm not sure if that's something I, it's a setting that I need to change. You can also change it just by clicking here in the tracks window if you wanted to do that. And you can use your arrow up and down keys navigation. Okay, and that's under the navigation thing here. So there may be uh, track highlights. Uh, don't know. Again, don't see anywhere to be able to change the entire color of the channel strip, but we'll look at that in a future video. Let's start up here uh, on the left-hand side. We have our inputs, we have our tape, inserts, sends, cues, and outputs. That's gonna follow this. If I click on inputs, it'll show or hide the inputs, show or hide the tape machine section in the console, the insert section, the send section, and the cue section. If I'm just mixing like I'm mixing, I don't really need to see the cues. I'll take those out and the output section, but I'm gonna need the other ones. I also can, can collapse that by just clicking here. Here's the inputs, put these little arrows. Here's the tape, the inserts, the sends, and the output. So every channel is laid out the same way. It starts with our inputs. If we click the plus, it's gonna bring up our inputs to be able to like plug a guitar and plug a microphone in. Now, if we're not, if we're just mixing. We really don't need the inputs. We can kind of collapse that. We could start with our tape machine. If you click on our tape machine here, this is where it's gonna allow you to put the tape in that you wanna put in. Now I'm gonna just pick the first one here. All I gotta do is click it. You don't need to drag it and it automatically pulls it up. You see that? Unlike the regular plugin that you would use in mixing in other DAWs, where you have you know the tape machine spinning and all the different um, controls inside of the tape machine plugin, all they give you here is an on off switch and a saturation knob. So they make it really simple. You don't need to have the entire plugin. Um, I suppose if you wanted to do that in the insert section, you could put another tape machine if you wanted to put your tape machine. So if you put, uh, if I search for oxide tape machine, let's see if it'll let you do it. Here it is, oxide tape. So there's the full tape machine plugin. Okay, I don't know why you'd want to do that, but just to show you that that's how you do it. And again, you don't need to drag anything into the to the box. You just click on it and automatically inserts it, which is really nice. So what you get is part of the, the saturation part of the, is just the saturation knob. But when you put it on as an insert, you can see the entire tape machine. You can control the tape speed and all of that. To remove it, you just click these little three arrows and say remove all and it'll go away, okay? So that's how you add inserts in. And again, you can use any third-party plugin. So if I were to go to, and I don't like the way it always, I like to see everything collapsed, not wide open like that, but this is how they do it. Again, there may be a, 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 a global setting that'll change that. So I can see all of my manufacturer's plugins here. But let's say I wanted to put a Waves plugin on here. I can click that and there's a Waves plugin. So you can use third-party plugins, which is nice. Remove. Okay, so there's our inserts, our sends. If we had sends set up, we could send things to uh, different uh, reverbs, delays, those sorts of things, and then our outputs. So as you see here, I've already kind of imported the session, obviously, and I color-coded these. And I want to show you... Um, Actually, in the next video, we're, I'm going to show you the um, the Neve Summing plugin because that's something that is uh, that a lot of people were anticipating, and one of the things that attracted me to Luna was the fact that it has built-in summing inside with their new Neve plugin. Now it's not uh, a free plugin; it's a $300 plugin, but you could demo it for 14 days. And we're going to listen to it in the next video to see, hey, is it worth 300 bucks? I don't know. We'll check that out in the next video here. Let's see if we could take off this tape. How do you take this off? When you right click, how do you get rid of it? Oh, view large icon. Let's see. Okay. It is icon. 
Uh, how do you remove it? I don't know. Can you just remove it by taking it off? No. Have to figure that out. Like if you wanted to get rid of it, how do you get rid of the tape plug-in? Not really sure. There must be a way to do it. Uh, again, I can't really see these really uh, difficult to see. Everything is so small, which is one thing I don't love. Oh, right here. Probably remove. Okay. Then no, no, that's not going to, how do you do that? Remove. Oh, that's how you do. You click remove and then you click the plug-in and it goes away. That's kind of odd, but okay, that's the way they do it. That's the way they do it. Uh, so that's kind of the layout here of this. You know, this is pretty much a standard, uh, you know, console setup view that you would see in any DAW. Channels, panning, uh, read, write automation, your solo mute input, your record enable, all that stuff is pretty standard. So that is a look at our console view mixer view and our edit screen and a basic walkthrough. In the next video, we will take a look at um, the summing plugin, the Neve summing plugin. I'll show you how to create a bus and put the plugin on a bus because that has to be used on a bus. And we'll see how it sounds on a couple of different groupings of instruments. So I hope you found this video somewhat helpful um, and interesting. This is another, again, a little introduction to the uh, Universal Audio record lunar recording system uh, let me know what you think below leave comments are you someone that's a universal audio user and you're going to download this again it's a free download but it's for mac only i'm not sure when and if it's coming to pc i got to think it will at one point um are you planning to use this and if you are if you used it yet what do you think about it comment below also leave other comments below about what other things you'd like to see in the luna system um and i will try to get to that over the period of time i'm going to try to make a bunch of videos um we're going to start off with a bunch of mixing videos and then we'll get to this from recording videos. Let me know what you'd like to learn below. So thank you so much for watching this entire video. As I always say, I want to give you a free gift. If this is your first time here, welcome to the family. I want you to go to homerecordingmadeeasy.com. I want to give you five free mixing training courses worth about 210 US dollars, five free courses. It's my way of saying thank you just for visiting homerecordingmadeeasy.com. And you can take the audio files from those courses and you can import them into any DAW, including Luna, and you can mix the song along with me. How cool is that? And speaking of mixing, if you really want to learn the craft of mixing in a very non-technical way, make sure you head on, head on over to mixingmadeeasy.net and check out what I have going on over there. So until next Plugin Review Friday, I I've been Dave with homerecordingmadeeasy.com and I will see you in the next video. Take care.